Morning, everyone. Morning. Good. So raise your hand if you are happy that you are here. I realize everybody raised their hand by looking at Mariam. <laughs> Very good. So, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mariam and the Exco team for inviting me. Uh, I came only for this event uh, and in approximately, actually, it's like you took about three minutes of my time, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm flying back. Uh, since, since Mariam requested, I could not say no. And I think this is a great, wonderful audience to speak. I mean, look at the person next to you. Come on, can you have a look at the person next to you? Aren't they wonderful? Yeah. So tell to the person next to you, you are wonderful. Tell them. Yeah. And also, <laughs> tell to the person next to you, I am so happy that I am seated right next to you. Tell them. Good. This is, the, this is the topic we're going to be speaking today. We, I have 45 minutes. I wish I have a whole day. But we don't have that kind of time, right? And, and you know, we all have a hectic schedule. So let's get, let's get going on this one. Now, those who have, how many of you have seen me speak in, a, in an audience before? Like you have been to one of my events. Okay, I guess many, some of you. How many of you have seen me speak uh, virtually, like video, Zoom, TV? Oh, good job. How many of you have not seen and is the first time you are here to see me speak? Nice to meet you. Very good. So the way I do these sessions, those who have been to my sessions, they know I like to make it very interactive. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little energizer. It's about 9.15 in the morning. So take your two hands up, everyone. Two hands up. And rub your hands together. Rub, 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 I see some of you at the back. You're like, oh, a little bit. Give it up on energy, right? Okay, good. And clap three times. One, two, three. Keep your hands like this. When I say go, I would like you to turn to the person next to you, and you're going to give them high five. Oh, not yet, not yet. I know this audience because chefs are proactive, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So when I say go, you're going to give high five, and you're going to say. Please be my learning partner. Now, before you do that, could you ask from the person next to you, is it okay if I touch your hand? Okay, okay good. Rub, 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 rub. Clap three times. One, two, three. Give them high five and say, please be my learning partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So during the session, in the next 45 minutes, I will be asking a couple of questions that you need to speak to the person next to you, so you know who you're going to speak. So show me your learning partner. Who is your learning partner? Oh, that, you, I need, you know, this is the chef student associate. I need a bit of more energy. So you're going to do like this. When I say go, you're going to turn to the process. You're going to go like, ta-da, you're my learning partner. Ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> Good. We have about five weeks, five, five to six weeks that we will end this year. Right? We're in November. Today is November 8th. I have a question I would like you to ask from the person next year. What is one thing that you did this year that have made you a better human being and a better leader. Two things, right? Better human being and a better leader. It could be within the, in your personal space or within the professional space. What is one thing that you did this year that have elevated your level as a person in terms of if your professional capacity or personal capacity? Ready? Go. Talk to the person next to you. You have one minute to have this, this uh, conversation. Good. So how many of you have had a good year so far? Raise your hand. <laughs> good, those who didn't raise their hand, have a conversation with those who raised their hand during the tea break. Yeah. Because if there's one thing that will create a culture of excellence, and the word excellence is not new, but the more I teach this, I realize that not many businesses understand what excellence is all about. Because excellence is not a destination. It's not a target. It's not a goal. It's not an objective. Yesterday, and you know, those, those who probably know me, they, they know I, I read a lot. And uh, I wanted to show you a book that I'm reading right now. It's a book titled as Leading by Sir Alex Ferguson. And when, you know, if you know football, I think you know who this guy is, right? <laughs> I mean, if you don't, just pretend you know for now. <laughs> uh, I was reading this book, and Sir Alex Ferguson describes that in his time at Manchester United, he never said to his team that this season we have to get the Premier League. We have to get the FA Cup. We have to get the Champions League. But he set a different target for all of them. That when you go into every game, 
make sure it's the best game that you play. Because here's the thing, if you go back to your team and say, well, here's the target we have to achieve. We have to get 98% on this particular area or the objective. You have 1,000 employees within your team maybe, or 600 or 500. Do you think they know what that means? In fact, they live confused. Right? But if you could break that down into individual small pieces that they can add value on a daily basis, that's what excellence is all about. Because before the word excellence, the word that was used in business was continuous improvement process. Many of you know this, the Japanese Kaizen process. That was there. And about 30, 40 years ago, the, the word excellence was developed by a Harvard professor, Tom Peters, in a book he wrote called In Search of Excellence. And where he describes that excellence means small things that we do every single day to reach our goal or the target. And in one of the, you know, this whole research around this area, one thing that came up was the mindset. The mindset that we bring to work every single day. I mean, look at everybody in this room. Everyone is a different person here. There's no one here who could say, well, I, you know, I'm the same as you. Because if you think it that way, you need to attend a different class with me. <laughs> right? Because everybody is just unique. And that's actually what makes the world a very special place. I want to tell you two stories about mindset. Number one, this happened in the Maldives, so that you know how, how you know, because we, you know, how many of you are Maldivians here? Very good, majority of you. So, I won't tell you the name of the company, but you probably will know the name of this organization. One of the largest state-owned enterprise chose to send one of their employees, and the employee's responsibility is looking after the airport terminal services. Now you know which organization I'm talking about. Right? I didn't say that. But you know, they, here's the thing. In sessions like this, these are things you have to reflect and learn. So they chose to send one of the employees to Singapore Changi International Airport, which is the, one of the best airports on the planet for 30 years in a row. Now, you know when you get an opportunity like this? I mean, many of you here know you get opportunity to go abroad, right? I mean, when you go, apart from taking photos, I'm sure you are you know, studying and learning, right? Yeah. 30 days. The employee was sent, he came back, and he's a manager, he's been there for nearly 15, 15 years. The HR manager asked a question. Hey, how was your experience at Singapore Changi Airport? What did you learn? Do you know what the response was? Now, since he's a Maldivian and the response came in, more in the Divehe language, I like to say it in Divehe. So you understand the tone and the attitude and the mindset. He said, <laughs> So basically he said, there is nothing new to learn. They have to come here and study from us. I mean, we're talking about Singapore Changi International Airport, 32 years in a row, the best airport on the planet. And yet he said, <laughs> The number one attribute of creating excellence in workplace, personal, professional, is the mindset that we carry. And the mindset comes with three things. Number one, it's the attitude that we bring to work every single day. Knowing that we don't know everything, there's a lot we can learn. The more we learn, the more we can study, and the more we reflect, the more we can understand where we need to study and learn, right? And the second thing is motivation. I think this, you know, as uh, uh, Isaac mentioned, this session, there's a bit of optimism here in this session. And motivation is one of the hardest things for a human being to, to, to live by that. So let me ask a question. Could you ask from the person next to you, from whom do you get motivation every day to do what you do best every single day? Come on, ask the person next to you, from whom you get the motivation? <laughs> <laughs> Someone from whom you get your motivation every day? <laughs> my, 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 my kid. Yeah, you, 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 your daughter, right? Yeah, okay, very good. Maria, from whom do you get motivation to? Children. Your children. From whom you get, you get motivation, sir? From my team. Sorry? Team. From your team. From whom do you get motivation? Don't oh, he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, from, from whom you get motivation? From the back, maybe here, one, one of you? Anyone? 
Your mom, right? Okay, so, so let, me, let me explain you this a little bit. What you're saying is not wrong. And let me ask for Shuja, my good friend. Shuja, from whom you do you get motivation? From the kids. From the kids. <laughs> good. So I was doing a session like this a couple of years ago with my team, and they got so excited and asked a question. From whom you get motivation? And our hairstylist said, I get motivation from Afif. <laughs> oh, I said, good for you. So you wake up in the morning, you go like, have you seen Afif? <laughs> have you seen Afif? And the others would ask, why are you looking for Afif? I'm looking for motivation. <laughs> It doesn't work like that, no. The science of motivation and where we need to get motivation to drive our mindset actually starts with us. The motivation is something that we had to get from within us. So we drive it, but your kids, your mom, your grandfather, your grandmother, your employees can encourage you so that their behaviors helps you to drive what you do every single day. You think I'm always like this? No, I'm like you. There are good days, bad days. But every day you wake up and you remind yourself that you've got to keep going, you've got to keep going. So the motivation is something that you have to drive within yourself. And the third attribute in the mindset, so the first one I said is the attitude, the other one is motivation, the third one is accountability. I believe Isaac mentioned a little bit of those points there. Accountability is one of the most important attributes that we don't see around. Because we're always looking at Whose responsibility is that? Who did that? Who didn't do that? Right? You know, there are three things since this is an association in the Maldives. If we don't do this for our country, who else is going to do it? If we don't do these kind of things for our country, who else will do it? No one. Right? And the second thing is, if we don't do it, we think someone else is going to come and do it, that person will never show up. At one point, you will realize, you have been always waiting, and the person that needs to show up is actually you. <laughs> and it's too late, right? So one of the most important things I want everybody to remember as I go through this is, we are all very unique in our own way, right? Very unique here. Is there, you know, is there anyone like you in the world? Come on, ask the person next to you. Is there anyone like you in the world? Some of you are not convinced. Yeah. Yeah, there is no one, right? Because one of the greatest things of our creators, we all you know, created uniquely with a unique DNA. Therefore, there is no one like you. And you know why we are unique? It's not because of our weakness, because people think we're unique because of our weakness. No, it's because of our strengths that we have. We are a unique person because there's something in us that we can do. Perhaps the other one may not be able to do it. And that is, in fact, you know, we hear this word, finding love at what we do, passion, right? There's no one in the world where your level of love for work and passion is 90%. That's completely wrong. Because what the data suggests is that people who love what they do most every day, they only do 20% of what they love most, and that keeps them going on. Now, let me ask a question. Do you like everything you do in your job? No. Oh, thank God. Because the last audience I asked, they said, yeah, we all love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We don't, right? There are, but, but we have to do it. We have to do certain things that to, to, keep, to keep going. So I'd like to throw a question to all of you. Who do you see here? Good. How many of you, well, at least know him? Good. How many of your favorite football players? Very good. Ask the person a question. Is Messi the greatest football player as we see now. Ask the person, see what their response is. And in fact, if, you, if your learning partner doesn't know football, it's all right. <laughs> Good. So is Messi the greatest player? Good, thank you. Yes, because when I go and teach, this, you know, I was just a couple of days ago, I was in, the, in high school, I was teaching them a program. After three hours, one student asked me a question. I feel if I have a question. I said, what's your question? Who is better? Is it Ronaldo or Messi? <laughs> so I said to the student, take a deep breath. I said, can I tell you, will, will you be angry if I said to you that your question is wrong? Because that's the wrong question. Because there will never be another Messi like this. Ronaldo is very unique in his own way, and Messi is very unique in his own way. I mean, Mariam and the team could invite any speaker in the world today. She invited me, 
And any speaker can come and do this kind of things, by the way, everybody is very unique in their own way, in the way they talk and the message that they deliver. You will never find an Afif like me. <laughs> yeah, give me a round of applause. <laughs> Because there, because there is only one Afi, right? Yeah, agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the point, right? I want you to look at this and reflect this question on you because there is no one like you in the world. And what a blessing is that if we can take those uniqueness and add value to people and give and contribute every single day and wake up and ask a question, what can I do today to make this world a better place? Most people, they don't. I think you do, that's why you are here this morning. I mean, you probably didn't wake up this morning and go, like, oh, I don't have anything to do this morning. Let's put the jacket and go to the chef's good meeting. <laughs> this is by design you are here, right? Intentionally, I'm sure when you went to bed last night, you knew you had to be here at 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock. That's why you were here. Take a moment, take a deep breath. What is one thing unique about you that you can give back to the community to create more optimism and to motivate other people and to guide other people. What is one thing unique that you have? Because when I look at you, I think there's really great uniqueness in you that others may not have. Come on, have a conversation with the person next to you. 30 second conversation, please. Good, everybody, come on back. Now, here's another reason why you're very uh, unique in your way. You are replaceable, not replicable. Tell to the person next to you, even if they don't like, you're replaceable, but not replicable. Please tell them. Encourage them. Yeah. yeah. We're all replaceable, but you see, you can't recreate the unique DNA and the uniqueness of that person. That's the reason why we have to look at this every single day. Because within everybody here, we have certain strengths, we're very good at those things, and we have things that we are not very good. But the hardest part is this one here. Right? I don't have much time to develop this for you, but let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that you can improve? Oh, this is a good team. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We all, right? And that is the fundamental thing. Every single day that we can improve. Now, when I talk about the strengths, I'm talking really about you know, things that you're very, very good at. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a technical skill. It also could be maybe you're a very good listener, or maybe you're somebody who is able to motivate other people, or maybe you are somebody who is able to make good decisions based on the data, the information that you have at that point of time, because you think rationally, you, you are a good critical thinker, so and so forth. Areas of development are areas that, I don't like the word weakness, because weakness are basically, you know, terms that we use, and sometimes you look at someone and go, well, you're weak in the world. If you haven't studied, how can it be a weakness? Like in the performance appraisal, managers would tell them, well, you're very weak in the financials, uh, reading the financial statements. Good, but the person have never actually explored and learned and studied, so how can there could be a weakness? You get the point? Right? Because, of, you know, a weakness is something that weakens our person. A strength is something that strengthens the person. So this is an area of development because you want to take the person to the next level. That's where probably the strength lies in. Hence the reason why. So I want you to take a minute now, talk to the person next to you and tell them, what is one thing you are very good at? So, in fact, to save the time, so with you and your learning partner, one of you will speak about things you're good at. The other one, one thing you can improve, right? Not two things, just one thing. Ready? One, two, three, go. One minute. Have a good conversation. One thing you're good at and one thing that you can improve. Good. Now, leading into this conversation in terms of creating, and I'm teaching you today how do you create excellence in a professional level. One of the language that we use in organizations, in individuals and teams and managers and leaders that, that, that doesn't make any sense at all is when at the end of this performance appraisal or review or a ghost review session, you would go and label people and go like, you are all high potential. So they're very happy because they got all the opportunities in the company, right? Exposure, cross-training, additional executive education. This group over here, no potential. Uh, oh, this group over here, low potential. And the rest of you here, we're just taking the space here. 
It's a wrong language to use as leaders because there's no way you can look at, for example, Ali Adam and say, Ali, by looking at you, I think your potential is between, uh, you know, out of 10, 7. There's no psychometric research data test which showed that when you look at Shuja, uh, that somebody can say, Shuja, your potential is from 5, 3. In fact, if you give a rating, is actually not his rating, it's my rating of him. Think about that. When I do an appraisal, it's not your rating. I just woke up and gave you a rating. And I go like you, high potential. <laughs> Language we need to use to create excellence in workplaces that we all have potential, we all can grow. The growth comes down to the responsibility that we take. If we take responsibility, and if we take the right action, there is literally nothing that we cannot achieve given the time and experience that we need to put into that. Yeah, good. So, so you get the point, right? So from today, if there's something, you know, when I first joined our company 10 years ago in our performance appraisal, we used to have this language. It took me five years to change the language. So there is no such thing in our appraisal. Now. In fact, we stopped doing rating. We don't do any more ratings. Because we basically say a performance appraisal is a conversation for you to tell us who do you want to become, how we can help you to grow. So let's have a conversation instead of giving you a rating. <laughs> right? So from today onwards, to create excellence, we need to look at people a little bit differently. Because everybody in this room here has the opportunity. Everyone. But it depends on the effort and the time. And one thing that most people don't want to do is I think sometimes we want to achieve a goal very quickly. We don't give the time it needs. And, and that's where the problem is. So turn to the person next to you. You also have potential. Tell them. You also have potential. <laughs> Good. What did you learn so far? Talk to the person next to you. What are the, some of the key things that you learned in my uh, la the first about 25 minutes or so. What did you learn? Have a conversation with your learning partner, please. Good. Come on back, everyone. Uh, with the interest of time, so I'll move a little bit uh, faster. But I wanted to speak a little bit about a word that is used in business. Every single day, leaders use the word. Have you heard about these two words? Growth mindset? Yeah. It's a good one to use, but the problem is how do you apply that in a very simple way? Most people are not able to teach that. Because we make it such a hard thing like growth, you gotta have growth mindset to achieve this. I think everybody had that growth mindset. The way they grow depends on the level of excellence they wanna take there themselves. So I wanna tell you a story. There's a restaurant in New York called 11 Madison Park. It's one of the best restaurants in the world. In 2007, back then, the, the, the owners of the restaurant, Will Guidara and his team, was invited for the best 50 restaurants in the world. So when you get the invitation, the event was in London, so when you get the invitation, of course you think that your restaurant is probably in the top 10, right? Because top 50 is also very good, by the way. But you wouldn't expect your restaurants to be number 50. Because 50 will be a shame. Even if you're the top 10, right? So he went there and he thought, oh my God, you were so lucky because there was really good reviews on New York Times. And so this is the event time. At 9 o'clock in the evening, the MC went onto the stage. It's the 50 best restaurant. And you know how they normally start, right? They will start from the bottom. Said, ladies and gentlemen, we are so pleased to announce the top 50 restaurants in the world. And please allow me to congratulate the 50th restaurant in the world. And you know what they do in these award events is if your restaurant is winning, they actually focus the light on you. Said, 50th restaurant this year, the award goes to the 11 Madison Park. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Will Guidara and his partner is looking there like, I mean, they never expected that. They thought they were in the top 10. They went back to their room after the event. This is in 2007. They said, it's such a shame. I know we are in the top 50. It's a great thing. But this is a shame. We need to get to number one restaurant in the world. Long story short, in 2017, 
Eleven Madison Park became the number one restaurant in the world. Well, Guidara was asked a question, what did you do differently? He said, when I went to work from 2007, from that event, when I flew back to New York and thereafter for years and years, every day when I walked into my restaurant and when I meet with my team, I ask this question. What can I do today so that my team will perform differently and we get into number one? And many of you know here, because this is your field, that if you are in the top restaurant one year, you may not actually be in the list anymore next year. Right? That's how it really works. And that restaurant is not in the top uh, anymore, but it's one of the best restaurants. And, and recently, I, I had the opportunity to be there to dine. I mean, it's just world class in every imaginable way of how they do the service excellence and the food and everything. I'm not a person to judge the food, but I, it was tasty at least, you know. <laughs> it was a good meal. So you get the point, right? And, and this is one idea that we need to get when it comes to the growth mindset. It really is an obsession with excellence. What can I do better? How can I do it better? And that is a mindset, and that really is what growth mindset is all about. Now, I chose another example that I could probably teach this case to all of you. This is an example of, I mean, you probably have, how many of you have watched this movie? Sally, right? So if you haven't watched, it's all right. It's free on Netflix. When you have time, you can watch it. But I'll tell you the movie in, uh, in, in, in two minutes. The interesting story about this whole case study is again, when it comes to a leader, when it comes to somebody with a technical skill, um, in January 2009, this happened, United Airways Flight 1549 took off from LaGuardia, New York Airport to go to North Carolina, and just in about five seconds to the 20 seconds of the flight timing, that both engines stopped working. A flock of Canadian geese hit both engines and engines stopped working. Now, just imagine the flight is up around 7,000 feet at the moment, altitude. Normally, you go up to 30,000 before you could, you know, put on um, autopilot and then let it fly by itself. Imagine, what would you do in that case? The captain was Captain Chesley Sully Salambaga, the gentleman that you see over here in the movie, which was played by Tom Hanks. Now, at the time, he had about 25 years of experience. This is 2009. Airlines were not designed. Technology and in the innovation of accidents, there was no such thing on the manual. How do you land a flight when the, both engines go out? So he has to take a risk. There's not, there was no airport to, you know, to land nearby. And plus, you know, the moment you take off a lot of fuel, so you have to dump fuel to land, he can't do that. Residential areas. And he took a risk. And here's another interesting thing. The first officer, it was the first time they flew together. Somebody you actually don't know. So you just come into the flight and say, good morning, hi, nice to meet you. We fly together today. <laughs> How do you handle a situation, right? So he landed the flight to Hudson River. That's why it, it became Hudson Miracle, because everybody survived. Of course, if everybody, um, you know, tragically, if everybody died, then the story will be totally different. I won't be speaking about that today. <laughs> so he was asked a question. Sully, with years of experience, there's no technical data available, or there's no process or policy or system in place to land the flight into Hudson River with 150 passengers. Why would you do that? He said, for the past 20 years, when I enter into cockpit, every day I ask a question. What can I learn from this flight experience? So 20 years has been asked the question. So he said, what can I learn today? So with that optimism, with that attitude, he did what he thought was best. And this changed the course of the aviation industry, by the way. Boeing then developed in their manual how to land a flight to water, <laughs> learning from this experience. There's different versions of it. But, you know, some experts in the aviation industry doesn't agree what he did, but it has changed the course of the aviation industry. And that is really the learning here. What is that growth mindset attitude you carry to workplace as an expert in your area? Because people are counting on you to make a change in the workplace. What is one thing you carry every day to workplace? What is the question you ask? Take a deep breath. What's one question you ask? Come on, talk to the person next to you. When you go to work, what is one question you ask every single day? Excellence is a game that you are on every single day.
It's not a game that you said. For example, at the beginning of the year, just in a couple of weeks, January comes, we will be so motivated to say, this year I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, and what's so motivated? The first week of January, in fact, data shows that around the world, millions and millions of people download and pay subscription for productivity apps. First seven days of January. And, and in fact, there are, you know, th there are people who develop productivity apps in that first week so they can get some money. And they know for a fact that of people who purchase them, only 20% will open the app in the first two months. And after March, nobody even knows that they have paid subscription. <laughs> the reality that we live in. So excellence is a game that you live every single day. For example, if I have to talk about what I do, and, and yes, I mean, some of you probably will, will be looking at me and you go like, my God, this guy could speak and he could laugh and joy. I know. I wasn't born like this. When I was born, my mom looked, didn't look at me and say, oh, my son Afif is going to be a public speaker. <laughs> no. Years of hard work, continuous learning, every single day. This is the 42nd book I'm reading this year. Yeah. And I know now your question is, oh, you have a lot of free time. <laughs> no, no, everything is intentional. This morning I woke up, I read 20 pages for while I was in breakfast and thinking about the slide I'm going to teach this morning here in this conference. That's it, everything. And you also have the same time, but it really depends on how. One of the things in our community, in the Maldives especially, is that there are two things that are very good in this country, in Maldives. Number one, whenever there's a disaster, we all come so close like, this is the best definition of unity. After it's gone, <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> you're on your own. I have my life. <laughs> Number two, we're very good at speaking about each other instead of speaking to each other. There's a difference. Because whatever the problem that we have in our community, in our organization, can always be resolved if we go and talk to each other instead of talking about each other. This reduces the productivity of this country, and this is one of the biggest problems. When you study the most, most productive nations, they have no time to talk about other people. They are always waking up and looking at, what can we do? How can we do that? That is the best definition of excellence. Looking at yourself and what can you do every single day to improve. And the other complaints that we have in our community, in every organization, not just Maldives, some other countries too, is that we don't have enough resources. But what if we can be resourceful? There's a difference. Because look at this one here. The resources are things that you can touch and feel and get and great, right? Resourcefulness are, look at this list over here. I don't know how many members are in this organization here. But when looking at this, I think there's about 50 plus or 60. The passion of every single one here, nobody could put a money value onto that. Even if you don't have the right resources. I mean, we're inspired by the work that you do. Myself, Ali, Ali Adam here, and one of our other colleagues, some of you probably know that we started an NGO also called Maldives Association of Human Resource Professional. I was in, 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 uh, somewhere in January of 2018, we got the registration. And I remember when we first wanted to bring an international speaker to the Maldives, we didn't even have a bank account. That's how it was, right? But may, everybody was saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't, you know, you need this. This was taken in August, and I, I showed this photo, in fact, to teach people the power of excellence and what we have as leaders. I took this photo in August 2019 when I landed there to deliver our training. You remember Ali, when we went to Addo for that uh, session in Equator Village? That's when I took the photo. Yeah. We're talking about an international airport that many people who work there, everybody sees that, right? And then came the COVID. 2021 March, right after the first time the border opens, I went to deliver a training, and this time the training was for the airport team. <laughs> <laughs> I landed and I took a photo right over here. Can you, I mean, j j just think of this. August 2019, March 2021, the letter G is not there. 
So, in the, it's a full day training about service excellence. <laughs> so, I showed this photo and you know what happened? The procurement department was here, they were looking at the finance department. <laughs> True story. And then, here was the, the, the maintenance department, right? They were looking at the in charges who actually approve those kind of things. So during the break, they all come to me and say, you know, Afi, we, uh, we, we know that, we know that, we've been trying to fix this, you know. For and I will teach you the answer, but you get my point here, right? This is not a problem with the resources. This is a problem of how resourceful people can be because when you have the mindset of excellence and growth, when you walk by this every single day, you will see it and you will go to bed fixing it. And the good news was that I arrived that morning early and I was leaving at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the evening, it was fixed. <laughs> it took me <laughs> to show them the photo. <laughs> But you, you understand the point over here, right? Yeah. The learning here is we all can be resourceful because we all have something great within us. And the greatness comes only if we know what that means. If you didn't believe this example, I have an international case study to share with you. This is from Japan, one of the best blood train service in the world. The case study goes back to 2015. And some of you complain and say we don't have resources and money to create excellence. Here's the story. Because in 2015, this company struggled to achieve their health and safety index. Lots of workplace incidents because they are the team. Basically, what happens in the Japanese bullet train service is the train comes to one station. You have literally five, ten minutes to clean the train. And there's a company responsible. The company's name is Kotesai. Motivational issues, employees not coming. And we're talking about Japan. And it's hard to believe this, right? Exactly. But that was the case happening. So the board decided to hire a new guy called Yabe, who comes from the banking industry. You know, Citibank. So he was the former CEO of the Citibank. He was hired and said that you need to change this work culture here. But here's the thing, we have no money to do this. You just do it. You gotta motivate people, less incidents at workplace, and this has to be the best in the world. And the time duration is that in less than seven minutes, you have to clean the train and let the train go to the other destination. Usually in Japan, you know, you come to the destination, everybody gets off, clean the train, and then you, know, you get in again, you, you continue your job. No money, no resources. Number one, what Yabe did was that he changed the mindset of employees by changing the way and what we call them. Because previously it was called as cleaning crew. Are you motivated when someone calls you cleaning crew? No, because if you're a cleaning crew, of course you walk like a cleaning crew. Yabe changed it to hospitality crew because cleaning crew is like this cleaning Meh. hospitality crew mm. see the difference right yeah number one number two when he got a little bit of money he also changed the uniform look at that the Hawaiian dress and welcoming one of the best train cleaning service company in the world even as of today Get the point? So when you look at these stories, the point is what can you learn as a leader to take and create that optimism at the workplace? What can you, you know, because there's always something that we can do regardless of the situation that we are in. And that greatness is something that you have. You probably have done some great things here. I follow your page before this speech. I look at the, some of the works that you have. I think it is incredible work going in this organization contributed by many of you here. I think you can do more. And the more comes individually when you look at what can I do and contribute without even someone asking. And that will change the course of how you see this organization and institute for many years to come. Take a deep breath. What did you learn so far? Have a conversation with the person actually. We're coming to the last five minutes or so of the session, please. And you know, when you look at our community, this is one of the things that happens because it's easy. When something doesn't happen, you ask this department, what happened? Or this team, oh, well, we were the best here, it's them. 
Right? Then you go and ask them, what happened? Oh, no, it's not us, actually, it's them. What we need in our community is this. Take personal responsibility in everything that we do. Because excellence creates and it starts the moment that we realize it, we all have a responsibility and when we take that personal responsibility. And personal responsibility is a feeling that you have. It's a feeling that, you know, it doesn't matter what the other person says or thinks. For example, how many of you here are interested in speaking public, like learning public speaking skill and being a good speaker like this? Raise your hand, how many of you? M many of you here. And you, and you know, here's the good news, you can do that. In fact, tell to the person next to you, you can do that. Good. And here's the other part of it. And I know why you are a bit hesitant to come here to do that because you are worried about what the other person is going to say. So you have been waiting to get ready to get ready. <laughs> How many years you have been doing that? You see, I have no concern of every message that I'm sharing because the first person who needs to believe in the way that you speak and what you speak is not the audience, it's you. I believe in every example, every story, every I mean, sense of humor words that I've delivered because I know that will resonate and link with you in one way or the other. I believe in that. Most people, we don't. And going back to Mahayo question, that's the biggest problem we have. We're all very concerned about the other person. The other person. Greatness starts with you. The best conversation you can have with anyone is the conversation you have with yourself. The best speech that you can do is the speech that you do to yourself every single day. The best responsibility that you can take is when you take responsibility of yourself. And that's where greatness starts. That's where excellence starts. If you look at organizations and companies and NGOs that perform at the very best level, fundamentally deep down, there is the culture of taking personal responsibility. And it's a feeling. Everybody, take your right hand like this, please. And you go like this. Take personal responsibility. Now, do, you know, some of you did like this, take personal responsibility. <laughs> now do that like you mean it. Ready? One, two, three, go. Take personal responsibility. And turn to the person next to you go like, take personal responsibility. <laughs> so for the next year and the years ahead, in this organization, if someone comes and starts blaming someone else, you go like, take personal responsibility. <laughs> That's the language that you should be speaking and using. Did you have a good time? Yes. Yeah. I am so glad and once again thank you Maren for reaching out and also the XCO of this team. I am delighted that I could do this with all of you and as you see I really enjoyed everyone. This is a, this is a new audience and I hope we, you know, we are able to connect at one point later on. But the only thing I wish for you is that every day when you go to work, ask yourself a question. What can I do to make my workplace, my people a better place? Because after all, when things doesn't go right in your organization, you should not ask the question, what's wrong with them? You should ask the question, what's wrong with you? Because greatness is something that you have within you. Come to the person next to you and say, you have greatness in you. Tell them. Yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you. Now, just one last 30 second conversation. What is one key message that you will take from my session today, this 45 minutes or so? that you would definitely want to develop and apply it in the work that you do ahead for many years to come. What is one example that you really like and enjoy, that you like to study further and you know, sort of things? Ready, go. Have a conversation with the person next to you. 30 seconds. What is one message? Who wants this book? Good. Yeah. Good, good. I know I've done this exercise in, before in the audience, so if you know the trick, don't, don't attempt to... Uh, you know, get this. Who, who, so, once again, who wants this book? Good, good, okay. Put your hands down. Let me ask a question. If you want something, what do you have to do? Good, you have to work for it. Okay, good. Who wants this book? All right, okay. Put your hands down. Let me ask another question. If you want something in a competitive environment and the world, what do you really have to do? Who wants this book? Me. Who wants this book? Me. Who wants this book? Who wants this book? Who wants this book? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, come on, of course. Yeah, come on, let's take a second. Let's take a photo. Let's take a photo. You get the book. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, hold on. Stay here. Stay here. You see, here's the interesting thing. I, I, I forgot that. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I, I know you also stood up and maybe they were not letting you go from there. <laughs> but later you both share the book. Right? It's a good book about change. Now here's the thing. I think many of you wanted the book. But I know what happened. Because even I saw when you were ready to go, your partner next to you goes, Oh no, don't go. He won't give it. <laughs> oh, oh, some of you are like, Oh my God, it's, yeah, I'm so far. You know, I can't. In the world like today, we all have the opportunity. So exactly, you know, probably my heart, like, hey, go, 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 right? Yeah, and, and you know, this is, there's a great learning here. The world is competitive. We all have the opportunity. But if we have the driving force, you will actually achieve that. Because no one achieves anything by sitting and feeling entitled that I should get it. You gotta go and work for it. So once again, congratulations for getting the book. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, and the book is for you, so you can share with the team. All right. So take your two hands up, everybody. And rub your hands together. Clap three times. One, two, three. Say thank you to the person next to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Once again, thank you, everyone. I wish you a wonderful, uh, wonderful annual general meeting. I believe you have. I, you know, since I'm not a member yet, I won't be staying. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to fly back. So once again, thank you. And I really look forward everyone having a great time and really lovely to connect all of you. If you'd like to stay connected with me, I am, as Isak mentioned, on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's probably a bit of good research there. So wish you a lovely day. May God bless all of us in the work that we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So here we are. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, let's take a, no uh, a photo as you normally take. Ready? Uh, are you ready, photographers? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Okay, ready? Ready? One, two, three. Look at the camera and smile. Okay. Excellence is every day doing something a little bit different, a little bit better. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a photo, like I normally do with my audiences. So when I say go, everybody's going to go like this. You're going to go like, ta-da! Right, so can we practice that every Ready, one, two, three, go! <laughs> Don't hit someone's face, okay? <laughs> Ready, one, two, three, go! Ta-da! One more, one, two, three, go! Ta-da! Photographer, did you get a good photo? One more, ready, one, two, three, go! Ta-da! Photographer, isn't that the best photo you took today? Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you. Hey, good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good.